Now 31, we've been kind of alluding to this throughout this section, but we're gonna focus on using the graph of a one-to-one -one function to graph its inverse. All right, so for a one-to-one -one function f defined by the equation y equaling f of x, find the graph of the equation of the inverse as follows. All right, so step one, there's really only one step. Locate the mirror image of each point in f with respect to the line y equaling x. And what that means is any point on your original graph that had coordinates a, b will be reflected over the y equals x line. And now we'll plot out as b, a on the inverse function. All right, so we've been talking all section about how x's and y's interchange, right? how domains become ranges when you're going from the original function to the inverse. So let's play this out. So here we go. It, it says in example nine, oops, let me scooch this up so we can see it. All right, so it's saying here, decide whether the functions f and g graphed are inverses of each other. Right, so this is either gonna be a yes or no answer. Yes, they're inverses, or no, they are not. So if you see this, these functions, these solid lines here, we see this one is f of x, this one is g of x. And here's the, the, the breaking line, right? The y equaling x line. I, I made it dotted because it's not one of the original two functions. So if you try and ignore the dotted line, and I know it's a little hard, it's a little crowded in there, you see f of x and g of x. And there is some symmetry. You'll see that the x-axis is actually the, the line of symmetry for these two functions. All right, but let's see if they're inverse functions of one another. And in terms of the graph, maybe you can see it right now, maybe you can see that y equals x is not a line of symmetry, right? These two functions are not mirror images of each other. And so just on site, some of you might be able to say no. These are not inverse functions. And other folks might really want a more numerical approach. So let's talk about the numerical approach also. Sometimes it's just good to compare ordered pairs. Let's look at f of x versus g of x numerically, okay? So find an ordered pair on either of these two functions. I'll start with f of x. I see this is a nice ordered pair. Do you see it right here at zero, negative two, okay? Well, what would that imply about g of x if these were really inverse functions of one another? It would imply that g of x should have the ordered pair negative two, zero. I'm gonna put a little question mark right now because I don't know if it has negative two, zero. Let's go find out. If I go one, two, zero, is that ordered pair on g of x? No. So there's another way to say, hey, these are not inverse functions of one another. Um, if I wanted to try, the, this ordered pair, so let's take a look. This is on both f of x and g of x. This is the ordered pair, what, is four, zero? All right, so I know four, zero is on f of x. Well, if these were inverses of one another, then zero, four should be on g of x. Is zero, four on g of x? It is not, all right? So because it's not, that's yet another indication that these functions are not inverses of one another. So the x and value, excuse me, the x and y values are not switching places. That's a problem. So take note, x and y values are not switching places. All right. So the answer to this is that f and g are not inverse functions of one another. All right, so this was the totally numerical approach. I had mentioned also that you might be able to just initially graphically see that the line y equals x was not a line of symmetry between the two functions. All right, so with that, we've got one more example we're gonna get to, and that will wrap up section 3.7, which will also wrap up chapter three for us. All right, I'll see you in a few, gang. Bye.